Have you ever stopped to think that if all the Negroes left the South, buses would ride like this? Because I understand. started Freedom Riders South, they started Freedom Riders North. This has been going on for so long now, I have a cousin haven't had to pay for a bus ticket since 1959. <laughs> you see, 20 years ago, the light-complected Negro had it made. Now it's the dark-complected Negro simply because of the government contracts. In order for big business to get government contracts, they have to hire Negro and white on an equal basis. And these cats go out and get the blackest cat they can find. <laughs> so when that government inspector walk in there, he can see him seven blocks away. <laughs> oh, you got one, huh? <laughs> Negroes move into one large area, and it look like we might control the votes. They don't say anything to us. They have a slum clearance. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you very much. And can you people wave back in the cheap seats here, okay? <laughs> I don't know if any point in my life have I been around weather that was actually this hot. And I'll say one thing, Roy Wilkins, you sure picked a hell of a place to hold this convention. <laughs> I mean, like, let's face it, the John Birth Society don't hold their convention in the Kremlin, you know. <laughs> but when I see the day that we can hold a convention in Jackson, Mississippi, and the great Martin Luther King will be the mayor's house guest, we're gonna have to all look for a new kick. <laughs> I, I don't know, I uh, checked in earlier, and uh, as you know what's happening with the uh, the hotel's here, but I finally got a room in the Mohouse Hilton. <laughs> and I must say that this is the first time in my life I've stayed in a gym where I have to share the wash room with 200 other cats. <laughs> When I walked in the first time, I thought Cora was holding a sit-in. <laughs> Have you ever... Any? No, it's my turn, you know. <laughs> well, I have a brother been sitting in the restaurants down south here for six months, and he's so damn sure he's not gonna get waited on, he don't even take no money with him. <laughs> I thought you was praying. <laughs> and as the Supreme Court said the other day, a school that prays together better cut it out. And <laughs> it's So you see, we have we have problems, and a lot of people don't understand us. I was doing an interview not too long ago, and a fellow said, Greg, I'm glad you invest in your money, and I'm glad you're saving, because so many people of your race have died broke that have made big money. But what he didn't understand, I'm spending mine. <laughs> because I feel to be born black in America, you owe yourself $100,000 worth of treats just to get even. <laughs> But you see, a lot of people don't understand, this is the era of the new Negro. The Ivy League suit, the short haircuts, brill cream, of course, two dabs now. You know. <laughs> the Wall Street Journal under one arm, the New York Times under the other, and Jet and Ebony tucked in between them. <laughs> Everybody's worrying about the gold leaving the country. Hell, it don't bother us. We ain't never had no real gold anyway. <laughs> 
and the gold they talking about to keep in Kentucky, and I'm not going down there anyway. <laughs> and the guys downtown that's worrying about the gold leaving the country is what I call the average typical American. Probably sitting at home right now, sipping Brazilian coffee out of an English cup, Persian rugs on the floor, they eat nothing but Swiss cheese, probably just walked in their home after seeing an Italian movie, sitting at a foreign-made desk, writing a congressman a letter with a ballpoint pen made in Tokyo, wondering what in the hell's happening to the gold. <laughs> so I, like I said, I have a just my way of saying thanks because I tested out everything that I'm using on us and you people push me downtown thank God so anytime and you will have a schedule in my office and Martin you know where you can get in touch with me just call me and I will fly anywhere anytime that I can make my schedule available. And certain times, like tonight, I've been on San Francisco on the West Coast now for two months. I flew in on opening night, and I told the manager and the owner that on the 5th of July, I had to have a night off. I understand things is looking pretty good for us now to tell me about three days ago, down in Mobile, Alabama, they just hired the first Negro bus driver. Of course, the stern wheel is 25 feet long. <laughs> You'll never believe this. I sat in the restaurant down south for 11 months waiting on the integrate, and when they integrated, they didn't have what I wanted. <laughs> but when you balance it all out, I guess this is still the most fascinating country in the whole world. Where else would I have to ride on the back of a bus have a choice of going to the worst schools, eating in the worst restaurants, living in the worst neighborhoods, and average $5,000 a week per year just talking about it. 